welcome to Mando Bug Crafts episode 12. I am Mando Bug, also known as Amanda. Hey, welcome you new <laughs> Welcome new viewers. <laughs> and thanks for coming back, returning viewers. So, starting out with something I've learned. This week has been a pretty busy week as far as me learning new things. Um, Apparently I've been wanting to learn all the things this week, <laughs> um, but I'll share two um, things that are most of you probably already know how to do, but if not, I'll give a brief explanation. So one of the things I learned how to do is called the Kitchener Stitch, um, and I, I believe you can interchangeably say Kitchener Stitch or grafting. Um, so what that is, is if you have a piece such as my cowl, um, it was worked as one long scarf, and there was a provisional cast on at the beginning which held stitches live, and then at the end you have live stitches, and it's a way of bringing the two ends together and sewing them together to give it like a seamless mesh. I apologize, All right, sorry, um, my dogs are outside, and the neighbors, um, when their dogs are out, they just like to talk to each other all day, so I apologize for the barking. <laughs> um, so anyways, the Kitchener Stitch. Um, if you don't know how to do this, I highly recommend watching a video because um, the pattern that I was doing, Shallow's Cowl, it linked to like a photo tutorial of how to do it and I was really confused. So I went ahead onto YouTube and I found um, a video and thank goodness. You know, I'm not really sure I did it correctly either. If you do it correctly, it it's like it's an invisible seam. It looks like it was just continuously knitted. Um, mine doesn't necessarily look like that, but it also doesn't stand out too much. I'm not sure if it's because I used this variegated yarn or um, maybe I did do it right. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm still too new to knitting to really know. Um, so I learned how to do that. And then the other thing I learned how to do was um, an alternate cable cast on. So I guess there's a thing called cabling cast on or a cable cast on. I've never done that before. Um, and then the cast on I actually did was an alternate cable cast on. So what you're essentially doing is casting on stitches, alternating knits and purls. So um, the pattern that I started was a knit one, purl one ribbing for a couple inches at the base of the hat and um, or the end. I'm not really sure. You know, at the beginning, the part that sits right here, the brim, the brim of the hat. <laughs> um, but so you use it for something like that. I'm sure you don't have to. You don't have to do the cast-ons that come along with these patterns, but this this uh, cast-on gives a nice um, stretchy border. Um, and there's not really a look uh, like a cast-on looking edge. I'll show you um, that project later, but um, I definitely needed a video for that one too. The pattern I purchased came with instructions on how to do it and. I couldn't figure it out. I was really confused and so again I went to YouTube. Um, I'll go ahead and share in my show notes the links to the videos that helped me in case anyone is interested in learning um, how to do these things. So those are the things that I've learned this week. Uh, well some of them. <laughs> I'll be here all day talking about things I've learned this week. <laughs> uh, if you're not learning you're not growing, right? <laughs> so. Um, on to my works in progress. So why don't I go ahead and share um, why I used that alternate cable cast on. I started um, the Everglade hat by Wooly Wormhead and I'm using my Cascade Yarns Sunseeker. It's a cotton acrylic blend with glitter in it. I don't know if you can see the glitter. Oh yeah, a little bit. There you go. Love me some glitter. So this is a knit one, purl one um, ribbing, and here is, I don't know how well you can see my cast on, my alternate cable cast on. So it's a pretty seamless looking um, edge, and it's very stretchy, so um, it's nice. I'm happy with it. I've just now gotten to the part where there's going to be some lacy leaves going on so and this will be a slouchy beanie um, but I'm enjoying it so far I will say 
<laughs> I made lots of mistakes my first time starting the increase rows for the slouch and the lace. Um, I think I was reading the chart wrong and I kept falling short of having an even number of stitches around or well, so that the pattern worked evenly around. I couldn't figure out so I kept tinking back, tinking back, but luckily I've gotten to the point now with my knitting where I can see what the stitches are. Um, with the lace especially, because I was having issues with that before with my uh, Los Lirio shawl I was working on. I couldn't read my lace, so when I dropped stitches or made mistakes, I had no idea where I went wrong because I couldn't even figure out what I had done. <laughs> so, um, so that's nice. Uh, it makes this project a lot less stressful because had I not learned how to read my stitches, I'd have probably ripped this thing out a couple times and never come back to it. <laughs> so. Um, uh, so I've been working on that. I also have done a little bit on my Los Lirio shawl. Uh, I started the knitting and I did. I dropped a stitch. <laughs> of course I did. Um, this is the front. So I mean, not too many rows here because I just finished up these flowers and here's, uh, I think I did four or five knitting rows. Um, and that's the hard part for me and I figured out why. It's because you do a yarn over and then you slip one, knit two together, and then pass that slip, slip stitched over and that yarn one hang, that yarn over hanging out there, like, it tries to, I don't know, it messes me up. Um, so I've been working at getting better at doing that combination of stitches in a row, especially because there's so many rows of that pattern that, um, and I don't think that gives away the pattern itself for this shawl, because um, that's not the only thing that you're doing. So, um, because it is not a free pattern anymore, um, it was for the knit along, and it's not anymore. So, um, but yeah, trying to get that finished by the end of this month. I believe I will. Um, I've been spending most of my time uh, on other projects, but I will get around to finishing that. Um, my dissertation. Woo! I haven't touched it at all this week, but I did planning. Does that count, right? This is my next chart. A little Thulu up in this house. I'm gonna do him in um, black, and then he's gonna be green. All the black squares are gonna be green, and the white squares are gonna be black. So, um, I, I have my next motif planned. I just haven't started it yet, which means, yeah, I am ten inches behind. I'm just going to have to sit on it one day and just go. <laughs> so, um, my spinning, I worked a little bit on the pink and gray merino I showed you last week. Haven't touched the silk at all. I haven't really made significant progress, so I won't show you any of that. Um, and then I picked up some sewing this week. Um, I put this on my blog uh, a couple months ago. I had gotten these Christmas stocking kits from Joann's on sale. So I picked up one for me and one for my husband, and I've started mine. Here it is. It's a snowman. Eventually, he'll be holding a string of lights, and there will be, like, snow melting from the top with my name up there. Um, but I added the hat on him yesterday or the day before, I think. Um, this is really fun. The sequins, they, are all, they all have beads on them. Let's see if I can go close up. Um, so you have to sequin all, you have to cut out the felt pieces, sequin and bead them, and then applique them to the stocking itself. So it's been a nice fun project. Um, my mom had a stocking like this when I was a kid and I was always so jealous because it, <laughs> I mean come on these are beautiful with the sequins and the glitter and the beads. So um, I'm determined to make this one for me. Um, the one I picked out for my husband is Santa Claus riding a motorcycle with like sunglasses on. So um, since Josh likes riding motorcycles, I thought that would be a cute one. Um, hoping to get these done by the end of the month since December is next month. And actually, I'd like to get them done by Thanksgiving because I think I'm going to put my tree up and uh, start decorating for the holidays before Thanksgiving starts. I will after Thanksgiving, I mean. Um, Sorry, I was thinking about how it's not even Thanksgiving yet, and going out shopping in stores and stuff, you're already hearing Christmas music, so it's, they're going to burn it out for me. I'm already not a big fan of Christmas music, um, and I'm not a Grinch, I promise, I just, 
I don't like things that are repetitive and every year they play the same songs whether it's sung by the same person or not it's pretty much the same thing and if you start doing that before December by the time Christmas comes I'm gonna go crazy so um, I, I can't believe I can't believe that's already going on I can't believe that's already a thing so um, so finished objects I have my cowl which you can kind of see. You know, I think when I record, I get closer and closer and closer to the camera. <laughs> like it's going to make a difference. Like you can hear me any clearer. You can't. Uh, but, um, so my cowl, I wore it out today. Um, me and Josh finally went and got Costco membership and did a giant grocery shopping trip. Um, and so I wore it out and it's, I love it. It's so fall and warm. Um, so I'll go ahead and take it off and show you all of it. Um, I finished it last night and I washed it and blocked it and then grafted it together this morning. So, um, the other thing I do have to say is even, this is my first time really blocking anything because it's really my first time working with wool. Um, I think I blocked it right, you know, I pinned it and I let it dry. Um, but the way this pattern is, um... The garter stitch edges kind of curl up on themselves no matter what. So um, I'm not I'm not entirely pleased with that, but I still really like the pattern. So it's here it is. Um, you can wear it all sorts of ways. I mean, if I really wanted to show off the pattern, I could wear it, you know, long, and you can see the long strings of lace and the beads and I don't know. I really just think this is a very stunning pattern. So, um, I very much enjoyed knitting it. I think I mentioned that before, um, because it's got the long sections of stockinette, and then when you get tired of that, you hit a lace section with some beads to keep you busy, and then it's back to stockinette again. So, um, really lovely pattern. Um, really nice yarn, my Malbrigo sock yarn. Um, I have a feeling I'm going to get a lot of use out of this. Oh, and um, so you probably don't know, unless you've met me in real life, that I wear glasses. And I don't wear glasses for the podcast because of the glare. I It really bothers me to see that, and I, I assume it bothers other people too. So I either wear my contacts for the podcast, or I just simply take my glasses off because I'm nearsighted. I can't see far away. I think, I think that's right. <laughs> I don't even know what I am. <laughs> Um, I know I can't see distance, so um, I can still record and visually be just fine without my glasses. But the whole point of me telling you that is um, I put the cowl on today and I snagged in all my glasses. And I was like, no, it's ruined! <laughs> and so I took my glasses off and took the cowl off with it and I unhooked it and I just stretched it and it went, it went right back where it was supposed to. I don't even know where I snagged it because I can't find it because it was that awesome. So I learned two lessons. Don't put this on when I'm wearing my glasses or take it off when I'm wearing my glasses. Um, and maybe if I snag it, it's not the end of the world because um, it just pulled right back in. Um, and I'm going to attribute that to the yarn because uh, it's pretty much ball and yarn. So, um, yeah. Shallows cow. Finished. This is primarily what I worked on this week. I just wanted to knock it out. Um, and I'm very happy that I did. I'm very pleased with it. It's going to get a lot of use. And I'm very glad it's mine and I don't have to give it to anybody else. I'm sure I'm not the only crafter out there who feels like they're constantly crafting for other people and they never make anything for themselves or keep anything. So, um, it's mine. You can't have it. <laughs> uh, make one of your own. So, um, moving on to check it out. So, this week, it's a little different than usual, um, I want to share this website that I ran into, um, it's called incolororder.com, and it's a blog with all sorts of really cool tutorials on there, and the reason I'm primarily into it, and you as a viewer may be into it, is because there's really awesome tutorials on project bags. And I say tutorials, there's really only one main one that I use, but I found today there's another one for the same type of bag, but in more of a quilted 
um, way. So, and that was a separate tutorial. So there are more than one. Um, and then uh, also, so, okay, well, I'm going to jump ahead of myself if I don't slow down. So I've made one project bag using that tutorial. Um, and I made a slight change to the pattern, I guess you could say. It's not, not, much, not a giant change. So here's the bag. I made mine reversible, which there's a pin in there. <laughs> I do use this bag, that's why. Um, I made it reversible, and that's not part of the tutorial. So here's my inside, and it's a drawstring bag. Um, I left this hole open so that you can pop the drawstring from the inside to the outside, making it completely reversible. Um, the tutorial online has it so that um, you just have an exterior and an interior fabric and it's not reversible. They have you close up this hole so it can only go one way. Um, I left mine open and I also, it only has got one accenting fabric on the exterior. Well, instead of doing an exterior, exterior and an interior, I did two exteriors, if that makes sense. Um, so, I made an exterior size and an accent instead of the interior is normally the size of the entire thing. Um, so, I'll link to that website on my blog. So you can go check it out for yourself. It's a really easy tutorial to follow. And it's nice because, um, you can't see this because the angle of the camera, but um, it's a box. Um, it's a boxed bottom. So it sits upright on a table, well, when it's full of stuff. It sits upright instead of be, and it holds more instead of coming just like to a complete straight end like, um, some totes do. Not all, but some. So, um, with this, I have been like ridiculous buying Halloween fat quarters. <laughs> I'm so bad. I can't see them and not buy them. Halloween's my favorite time of year. They have the cutest prints. And I will carry around Halloween stuff year round. So, um, I started making two more project bags. Um, but I ran out of black thread, so I didn't get to finish them last night. But here's one that I'm doing that's, I mean, they're going to be reversible just like the other one. So um, that's one side, and this is the other. So I kept that spider fabric on both sides tops. So um, I think I'm partial to this side. I really like the orange with the witches and, oh, it's so cute. Little black kitties. Um, and so I guess I can kind of show you what I was talking about. Um, in the pattern, they have you do the interior accent, and then I did an accent exterior, exterior accent, accent interior. So, um, I'm not sure if that really makes sense, but hopefully somebody out there goes, oh, I see what you're talking about. Um, I'm not the best at explaining stuff. Um, and then the other bag I'm working on is this one. So here's one side. I love the pumpkin fabric. I actually bought two of these fat quarters, so I have another one that I haven't used yet. Um, and then here's the other side. It's like ghosties and bats with the same accenting fabric. So. But I can't make any more progress on those until I go to the store to get more black thread because I ran out. And, you know, excuse me, it doesn't really matter what color thread you use when you're not doing top stitching. But this pattern does have some top stitching in it. Um, when you make the pocket for the drawstring, um, this would be a better side to show you. When you make the pocket for the drawstring, you do have to top stitch. So here you can see the black sewing lines and the only other color I have is white and that would stand out ridiculously on these project bags so I'm just gonna wait till I get more black thread um so that's my check it out on to current events and upcoming events 
I don't really have anything to add to those. You know, Nerd Wars is still going on, but there's not much more to show you that I haven't already showed you. Uh, my Everglade hat is going to be used for a project. Um, that's as far as that goes. Upcoming events. It's winter time. There's not a lot of events that I really know of, especially in my local area, so I don't really have anything for those segments. So, I hope you guys have a good week, and I will see you next week. Bye!